This short video is going to walk you through the process of setting up and then using the Design Safe software in order to perform risk assessment in the Cal Poly ME Senior Project. When you first start Design Safe, you are asked to go through a setup wizard. You can see here it's six steps. Just go ahead and click next to go to the next screen. Step two asks you to identify the industry you're working in in order to characterize or uh, reduce the number of options that you have. Because all of you are working in different industries, it's probably safest just to choose all industries and then next. As you work through Design Safe, you're going to have the option to choose from checklists of tasks and then hazards. That's what step three is dealing with, which checklist. Now the default is probably okay because I think it has them all selected, but I recommend choosing include the checklists selected below. Then you want to make sure that each of those items is checked. Make sure to scroll down and you can also see what those different categories are. When you're happy with that, select next. Step four looks at the scoring system. So how you're going to assess the risk of uh, each of the task hazard combinations. I recommend just using the, the default system and choosing next. Step five is asking you what the default checklist is going to be for each new item that comes up. You can only have one checklist for each um, product that you are analyzing. So for most of you, that's going to be the design safe consumer checklist. But if your product is not a consumer product, or if you're working on a process, you might choose a different dynamic checklist. Just choose from the pull down menu. However, for the risk scoring system, I recommend sticking with the ANSI B11 two factor. It's a, a pretty straightforward one that, that's clear, easy to understand, not very detailed, but it's appropriate for the amount of information we have right now. Then choose next. Step six is just asking you, are you sure that you didn't want to make any changes? This is your last chance before having to run through the whole setup again. Just go ahead and choose next. Now the software is going to copy the libraries that it set that you told it that you wanted on top of the old ones that were in there. So, or at least that's the default to replace the existing checklist. I recommend doing that. And then because it's going to copy several of them over, I recommend checking the box, use this action for all file conflicts and select OK. So then you're done with the setup wizard. You have the option here to go to the tutorial or you can just click finish. If you do go to the tutorial now, you will still have to click finish at some point in time. If you don't go to the tutorial now, you can access it from the help menu within the software. Every other time you open Design Safe, you're gonna get this pop-up window, which asks, do you wanna create a new analysis or opening an existing one? I'm going to walk you through what's inside Design Safe by looking at one of their existing ones, the one that's pre-selected here, the Design Safe product sample analysis. And once you have that selected, choose OK. So because I selected Design Safe Consumer as the default um, dynamic checklist, but that differs from what this file has as its dynamic checklist, it's asking you to verify what you want to do. Um, everything default here should be fine, so you can just click OK. This is your main Design Safe screen when you're working on doing a um, risk analysis. Up top there are your standard Windows type menu bars. Obviously a few icons are unique and you can play around with those later if you like. Um, I haven't found the need to use any of them. Up top you have some main tabs, the identify hazard tab that we're in right now and the assess and reduce risk tab that's done after you identify hazards. Below those tabs, um, is the list the assessment tree it's the uh, the product the users and the tasks for each users are listed here to the right of that are input instructions so at the moment we have a product identified so the software is waiting for us to identify users of that product and you can see in this sele input selection area there are already two users identified an operator and a maintenance technician and over on the left side, you can see that those two are shown as well. So there's a correspondence from the right to the left side. 
Note that these add, edit, delete, move down buttons are directly associated with the input selection area. So be careful. If you click add here, you're trying to define a new type of user as opposed to just saying, yeah, add the users that I have selected. What you want to do is choose next when you are happy with what's selected there and it will take you to the next screen. After you take the after you click next the software takes you to the next level of your analysis tree so in this case it took us to operator for operator now it's asking what tasks that operator performs and you can see there's a lot of options here to choose from some of these are selected already the ones that are selected are over on the left hand menu now so that's what happens you select them on the right they show up on the left if we then choose next it will take us to the first of those operations. So for each one of your operations, there are a number of different hazards that might exist and hazards are categorized in the software. So you can see mechanical is highlighted right now. That's typically the default when you open up the, the hazard list for a task. And under mechanical, we have a number of different options. For this particular example, the only hazard that was identified in the mechanical in area was impact, and it had an associated cause that was dropped parts. This is a, a process I recommend you follow as well. Whenever you identify a hazard, you say what the cause of it is, or the failure mode, if you will. So think back to that process from FMEA. So as you can see, I, I recommend at this point, as you're doing the look through of the software, select some of these other, ca other categories, see what the hazards there are. When you're happy with this, if you click next, we would go down to the next task, the 1-2 load unload materials task. But I think we're done with this now. What I'd like you to do is go ahead and click on the assess and reduce risk tab, and we'll see what's over in that area. Once you identify the users and the tasks and the hazards, you can then assess the risk with each of those hazards. So now in the assess and reduce risk tab, you can see um, the information in yellow we already defined. So that's our uh, users, tasks, hazard category, hazard, as well as cause failure mode. What we're adding here are the severity and the probability, which are part of that ANSI B11 risk assessment. And you can add them directly in the table as I've boxed here, or um, you can focus on the one that's identified up at the top and fill it in at the bottom box here, severity and probability. So the one up at the top is the one that's active that corresponds to the green, yellow, red tables at the bottom. If you're not sure what those mean or how to best assess them, there is a link here for risk scoring system that'll provide some guidelines to you. The, the, the most important thing is that you are consistent and you apply this uh, with a team, you make appropriate decisions, you aren't just haphazard about it. Um, now, from this screen, as soon as you're, you're done entering things, you can use those menu buttons there to previous column, row, next row, etc., or you can simply click within the, the spreadsheet format as it's shown here. I do want to mention as well risk level that you see just to the right of the probability is an auto calculated by the software. That's the ANSI B11 category um, associated with the severity and probability that you choose. So you do not choose the risk level, it's calculated based on severity and probability. Go ahead and click to the right now. Let's see some of the other columns in this table. The next column to the right are the risk reduction measures. So this is where we're going to fill in the things that we can do to make um, our design more safe. When you select one of those risk reduction measures, you get a pull down menu. This pull down menu allows you to choose specific predefined uh, types of solutions for your indicated hazard type. So in this case, the hazard type is impact. So there are some common things that are done to reduce the impact hazard. By, you can eliminate it by design and you can see preventing energy buildup, preventing energy release, things like that. Um, there's also substitution, guard against hazard, and so on. So this is a great thing to do to look through what other people have done to try to eliminate that hazard. The alternative is if you've already got some ideas in mind for what you can do 
to reduce your risk, you can fill them in directly down at the bottom box there. That's just a text box you can fill it in. Okay, once you go through this for each of your hazards, go ahead and click on the, the right button and let's see what's next in this table. So interestingly, we now see severity, probability, risk level again. Um, and, and it's not clearly identified in the software, so I wanted to explain this. After risk reduction measures further to the right, there's a new severity and probability. This is the anticipated new severity and probability associated with the design or the process after you've implemented your reduction measures. So you can see a projected reduction of risk. In addition, what you see here are the person responsible, the status, and the date. These are important tracking measures and it's the way that we use this document to verify that we've implemented the design changes or the process changes that are necessary. Go ahead up to the top and choose reports. Let's see what the final resulting report looks like. There are a lot of report options that you can choose from here. I recommend just using the standard design safe report. When you're setting up your report, you could focus in on just one user or just one group of hazards or the status of operations, but let's take a look at everything all together. So click preview and we can preview the detailed report for this example file. This is the format of the report that you're gonna get out and it's basically a table, a, re a reduced table like you were looking in the software. It's got a lot of header information I'll talk about in a moment, but down below we get an operator and task combo and then the hazard and failure mode associated with that um, user and task and then an initial assessment of the severity and the probability leading to a risk level then anything that you said that you would implement in order to improve the results your projection of the resulting um, severity and probability and the calculated risk level and then the status the the person who's responsible and the date that it was completed uh, there are other uh, reports that you could put together as well but i think this provides a good summary and is certainly appropriate for you sharing with the uh, uh, equipment technicians on thursday now i went ahead and closed design safe so i could reopen it again so walk through the process of creating a new analysis so please do that and then make sure create a new analysis is selected and choose OK. When you create a new analysis, you're gonna to have to agree to the licensing agreement. I encourage you to agree. Next, you're gonna enter that header information that goes into the, the table that we just looked at, or the report rather we just looked at. So give your assessment a name that is required, then choose the product, or if you are designing a process, you can use process for the application and then select next. How you perform the assessment can either be a task-based approach or a hazard-based approach. Task-based, I think, allows you to be a little bit more rigorous and make sure you're not forgetting anything. So I recommend choosing task-based and then next. These next couple of screens are basically that header information. So you can add a company name, facility location, and Next, you have the opportunity to enter the names of the people conducting the assessment. In this case, this would be your team. Go ahead and choose next. And then um, I would focus here on doing a complete risk analysis, so detailed and next. And then um, I would not do anything on this screen. Go ahead and choose next. Um, the active checklist right now is the consumer one because that's what we identified. If that's not appropriate for the particular analysis you're doing, you can change it right here and then choose next. And then that takes us to the uh, risk scoring choice. Again, the default we chose was the ANSI B11 two factor. I recommend keeping that consistent. Choose next. And this allows us to choose a particular template. I wouldn't change it. Just finish. And that takes us into Design Safe where you can start choosing some users. At the user level, you want to think about who's going to be using your product. And you notice that I chose adult, very young, child, and passerby, non user. This is because um, most of your products are designed for a particular user, but a lot of them are going to be on display at the expo. So think about 
all of the possible uses or exposures of your product, including the expo if you have anything turned on or accessible, um, including your testing with the product and including the final user. If you select on adults or just choose next, it'll bring you to this list of common tasks. I've gone ahead and chosen a few common types in the checkboxes here. When you select a checkbox, it will show up in the list on the left. When you're done with the screen, choose next. When you click next, it actually takes you to the next user and that doesn't really make sense for us. So instead, go up and click on that um, first task that you identified, in this case, first use. For each task, you're going to get this list of categories of hazards. So mechanical, for example, has hazards like crushing, cutting, and severing. Ergonomics and human factors includes hazards like posture, duration, lifting. And for example, heat and temperature has things like radiant heat, severe cold. Um, really, it's up to you now to use these categories and look through the hazard lists and identify the ones that are relevant to your specific design. That wraps up the walkthrough for Design Safe. Let's do a quick review here. When you first open Design Safe, you're going to have to go through that initial setup and identify the industry that's most closely associated with the product that you're designing. And then you will go and start a new assessment, a new risk assessment. When you do that, there are two main parts. The first tab is to identify the hazards. So you'll enter the header information, choose the types of users, choose the tasks for each user, and then finally the categories and the hazards associated with each of those tasks. Once you're done with that, you go on to the second tab, which is the assess and reduce risk tab. Here is where you identify the severity and the probability for each of those hazards. You then, for the high risk ones, want to identify risk reduction measures. You don't need to do it for all, just the high risk ones are where it's important. When you've identified measures, you then want to project what the new severity and prob probability might be if you implement those measures. And then lastly, you want to identify dates and responsible parties for each of those actions.